What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and I'm right back at it with my series, A Closer Look. And today, we'll be taking a closer look at the Kikuyu people of Kenya. <laughs> And as always, if you want access to sources, courses, and exclusive videos, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. The Kukuyu are considered the most populous and most politically and economically powerful group of people in Kenya. More than 5 million people consider themselves Kukuyu. They're said to account for about 17% of the total Kenyan population. They've traditionally occupied the fertile highland areas between Mount Kenya and the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. The Kikuyu speak a Bantu language, also called Kikuyu, and are closely related to the Embu, Meru, Kamba, and Imbiri. Kikuyu is actually the Swahili pronunciation of the more correct term Gikuyu or Agikuyu, as they call themselves. I actually personally know several Gikuyu people, and I can attest to their warm, gentle, and kind spirit. And I'm really not just saying that, like, from my experience, they are some of the most chill Africans I've ever met. Now the Kukuyu belong to the northeastern Bantu branch. Bantu people began moving into East Africa sometime before 500 CE. Now scholars aren't exactly sure from what exact point they migrated from to be in their current location today in Kenya, but it's generally believed that they came from a further northeastern region around the 15th century. Traditional Gikuyu are monotheists who believe in the supreme god in Gai. Gikuyu origin myths claim that their first ancestors, Gikuyu and his wife, Mumbi, were given Kukuyu land by the god in Gai, who is believed to reside on Mount Kenya. Mumbi bore Gikuyu nine daughters who then founded the nine main clans of the Gikuyu. The supreme god Ngai is usually addressed by the Gukuyu as either Morungu or Mwene Nyaga. In remembrance of what Mwene Nyaga has given them, the Gukuyu address them thus in their prayers. O oh, our heavenly great elder, we are thankful for the natural gifts which you have bestowed upon us, unlike the lands of our neighbors, some of which you passed over in a hurry, and threw one river here and another there leaving the rest of the country dry and in many places unforested. Remembering this, we surely believe that even as you gave us all the good things of life, you will no doubt always give us wisdom to make good, strong spears and sharpen them well. O oh, Mwene Inyaga, the greatest elder, you will give us knowledge to make strong bows and arrows that shoot well and to the mark, so that we may keep our enemies at bay who seek to take our cattle and therefore starve our women and children and make the tribe weak. O oh, Mwene Nyaga, who dwelleth on Kere Nyaga, you will give us strength so that when our enemies come to close quarters, we will be able with your guidance and our strong muscles to drive our spears right through their hearts and prevent them from depriving us of the gifts which you, the Lord of nature, have bestowed upon us. We pledge to you, O Mwene Inyaga, that we shall not sit idle and let anyone snatch away what you have promised to our forefathers to be our children's birthright forever. It's important that we understand this Gakuyu prayer to Mwene Inyaga because it plays a role in Gakuyu history later. By the end of the 1600s, the Gikuyu and other closely related Bantu people had settled on the slopes of Mount Kenya and the nearby highlands. The Gikuyu had generally good relations with the Maasai as the Maasai provided leather for the market and in exchange wanted iron weapons and gourds for containers. The Maasai expanded in the 18th century and the Gikuyu adopted Maasai weapons and fighting strategies making them one of the strongest groups in the Kenyan highlands. The vitality of Gikuyu society lies in the sanctuary of the Gikuyu soil itself, soil given to them by Mwene Nyaga. Because the land of the Gikuyu people includes some of the best farmland in East Africa, the British, during colonial rule, displaced many Gikuyu from their land to make room for European settlers. 
This displacement of land and the dismissive treatment they suffered even after serving the British in World War II led the Kikuyu to form a liberation movement in Kenya called the Mau Mau Uprising. And as mentioned, the importance of the Kikuyu prayer to Mwene Inyaga, Kenya's first president of a liberated Kenya, Joma Kenyatta, channeled this ancestral spirit to drive the Kikuyu to their ultimate victory and their independence from British rule. Joma Kenyatta is quoted as saying, Communion with the spirits is perpetuated through contact with the soil in which the ancestors of the tribe lie buried. This quote once again solidifying the importance of soil to the Kukuyu. The Mau Mau uprising ultimately succeeded in hastening an end to British rule as they re-established control of the land that they were given a long time ago. Well, I'm all out guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.